So this is a piece of cottonwood bark, five inches wide, 14 inches tall, two inches thick. I'm going to be carving a fairy house in this, a.k.a. gnome home. Um, you do not have to have bark to do this. You can get like a, a branch, you can get a half little log, you can get a two by six from the hardware store, two by 12 from the hardware store. And um, you do not have to do this just in the cottonwood bark. So let's get the camera in the overhead and start drawing. For the very beginners, it helps to have two different colors of pen. So you can do your draft, then you can do your final with your black pen or vice versa. So I've already cut this with my chainsaw. This is gonna be a roof. We're gonna to have to do some deep carving here because we wanna have a chimney too, right? So let's see here, um, put this line here and we'll make sure that we focus. This can be a chimney here. So all this wood here is gonna be cut away and all this wood here will be cut away. So I slope my roofs back sometimes too, because if it was just a roof on this, like this, you're not really gonna see it. So I, you can see there I beveled it down. So we'll do a roof here too. Um, you know, you can have a bunch of different houses on here. Bring our roof, uh, let's, how are we gonna bring our roof down here? Let's just kind of end it there. So there we'll have a landing here, right? So there'll be a like a, a door here. Do a window up there. Um, we'll make this part of the same house. So that will be a landing there too. Does that make sense? So there'll be like little cliffs, rock things there. Now, those roofs are already sloped this way. Can we slope roofs this way? Yes, we can. So let's slope a roof that way. And I'll do a cut like this. This is all just different depths and movements. So that roof will be here. Um, and do we need to have a roof here? No, we don't need to have a roof here. We can do like a kind of cliff rocks, put a window here, put a window there. You can put, put windows, whatever you, wherever you want, put a little landing here, with some down here with some rocks, put a door here. I think, I think you got it covered. So lots of, uh, Lots of carving on these, lots of depth, lots of movement. And um, I'm going to start by cutting all this out first. Okay, so this roof, well, I want this roof to be higher than this roof. And bring it down like this kind of. Different slopes for different, like see this roof slope different than this one. Different slopes and lots of movement for these pieces. Yeah, they make them the most funnest. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using my Dremel 4000 with a Dremel flex shaft. Here's my favorite go-to burr here. This is the Cutsole Extreme Flame Burr. I'm going to be hogging out the wood with this, get this chimney to pop, push it back so it's farther back off the roof, and uh, have fun. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm going to use this Cutsole Extreme Taper Burr to uh, cut this chimney out and get rid of that wood in there. Okay, so I can't cut, cut any deeper in there. So all I do with this bark is I just get a screwdriver and pop this piece out. Pop it off. Now we can get in there, get our Dremel in there. And definitely don't feel like you have to carve as fast as I do.
Okay, so there's the chimney. So let's cut a bit deeper there and push it back so we can get that roof to slope forward. Okay, that's how simple that is. So let's under let's keep on doing the undercuts with this bit. This roof here, I have to make this roof seems like it's so the roof will be closer to you than the house. So the house will be pushed back. Okay, this roof. Just sloping this roof here. Yeah, I'm using this burr. You can do deep cuts with it, or you can use it on its side to remove lots of wood. Oops. Oops. How'd that other roof go? So here we go. There's some super fast carving. There's our chimney. We've got a roof here. We've got another roof here. You're going to be able to see the shingles. we got our little thing for our door here, like a little walkway. Um, now what i got to do is How do I want this roof to go? Do I want it to go like this? Yeah, I think that's good like that. 
So I want to cut this on an angle. And we're going to make it look like there's a little rock cliff above that roof. Separating the roof from the house. Okay. Break time. So I got to apologize because I was just kind of friggin' carving heavy hands crazy there. But you guys can see the damage that these burrs can do on the wood. Yes, this bark is soft. But like I said earlier in the video, you can do it with a 2x6, a 2x12, half a log, a full log. You know, I think with this, like with these fair houses, the more unnormal your shapes are the better it's going to look in my opinion you know, like, like we're not building normal houses we're, we're we're curving not building but curving we're curving fantasy so that's that this doesn't even hang that straight on the wall it hangs a bit like that and that's perfectly fine for me so now all the bulking is done i spent about a, two minutes cleaning it up a bit when i was done carving that's how fast i carve when i'm not filming but i just kind of forgot that i was filming so i just kind of went for it so we're gonna put some rocks here i'm not too sure i think we'll probably put some rocks here some rocks here okay so rocks here and then down this side right for a ledge for the door rocks here rocks here roof i'm not too sure about rocks here um door i'll put a door on this side over here and a door down here and a big window here and maybe just like a smaller window or over there try i just try not to make everything lined up you see how this this ledge is lower than this ledge you see how this roof is lower than this roof and it's just got a bottom platform and it's good to leave some some of the bark on the piece or whatever the, the natural outside of the wood so there we go so let's put the camera back on the overhead and draw some things on all right sorry i can't get the whole piece in there but so roof roof um let's put a door kind of want to so we got it we're gonna at the bottom here we're gonna have a door where they come you can do your doors any way you can make them round most of my fairy houses no gnome homes are roundish looking so we'll make this door kind of round down here there's that door um, do you need to have a window there? No, you don't. Now this door, so this one's center here. So then let's push this door just kind of off to the 
Never Never Land. Door frame. Um, what kind of window do you want to do? Any type of window you, you want. You can do a window like this. So there's a window. Well, I kind of look. Actually, let's kind of fix that up a bit. <laughs> so there's that window. Now, a door here. These are just reference lines for me, and a big window here. So that bulking it out, removing all the wood was, let's give this a bit different shape. Actually, that's, uh, let's see here. Let's go like this. That's why I'm suggesting two different color pens or pencil so you can erase it. There you go, that's good. That, the bulking out was the quick part of this. These take a lot of time, lots of detail, carving, lots of burning. So what I'm gonna do, I think um, with the same burr, I'm just gonna quickly, so we got our door frame here, right? I'm gonna quickly cut on the outside of that, cut on the inside of that, for everything, okay? Then I'm going to remove the wood outside the door frame and on the inside of the door frame to make it seem like the door frame's pushed out from the piece. That's what wood carving is, is just basically elevations and shadows. So it's for all the doors, all the windows. I'm just going to quickly cut it out. It would be like a knife carving, like a stirrup cut. Like, man, let's just get the fan going and hit her quickly. Now you remember, the more, the, the deeper that you cut around this door, the deeper that you cut around this door frame on the outside or the inside is the more wood that you have to remove from here. You guys can see all that how that works, and I'll get. Oh boy, you guys can see how that works. I'll get all these cut, in, and then we'll start removing the wood around them. Okay, you all cut in. I'll start removing the wood. I'll get this done with this burr, but then I gotta get hook up another burr to smooth everything out, remove more wood. Okay, I still got the same burr on. Um, I figure what I'm gonna do now is just quickly carve in some rocks in this cliff.
Okay, we gotta do up here. We gotta do down here. Okay, so, oh yeah, we gotta do uh, right here too. Here and then down. Okay, so before I go getting ahead of myself, now I got all these cut in, all the rocks. Now I got to get a, another burr. What's another good burr I should use? Oh, yeah, I know. Um, stand by. Let me find it. Oh, it's right here. This is the cut saw. Um, taper burr, the silver one. I'm just going to go in here and kind of round all the rocks off. Just kind of running around, cleaning this piece up a bit. Okay, let's take a little break. My problem today is, my problem today is that when I take little breaks, I mean like um, I take little five-minute breaks, but I've been taking like half an hour breaks. <laughs> Hi, Liz. Okay, like I said, I'm sorry for curving so fast and crazy in this video, but um, these do take a lot of work. Um, the quicker part of the piece is done like there's lots of wood burning to do i actually i basically got to wood burn this whole piece but what we're going to do now is we're going to cut in some shingles so you know if you look at this piece now you look at this piece now the roofs go this way so i don't want to put my um shingles on let's see i've got a pencil i don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it i don't want to put my shingles on this way because that doesn't make sense. I want to put them on straight, right? Just because your roofs are tilted that way. It's got to think of like a real, real uh, roof. Let's just do some red here. So you guys kind of understand my point. This might be silly for me to say, but, you know, if you put your shingles on that way, the water could get underneath that shingle there. So you want to put your shingle layers on straight. And I'm going to do a roof here too, right? Then cut up each shingle. Same with this. Straight, 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 then shingles. Okay, so I'm going to, I think I'm going to use, um, this is, I'm going to be carving super quick too. This is the cheap Chinese uh, burrs there. They got on the three point cutters. Get on them, get them on Amazon. The cheap Chinese cutters you get on Amazon for like 10 bucks or five of them or something. They're super awesome burrs for stops and starts like uh, knife carving, but they get dull super fast. Okay. So I'll just do a quick demo on these ones. So if you think of your shingles, like um, they need to, like this top shingle needs to overlap that one. They need to overlap each other so the water can run off. And if you think of them um, like bricks, you want to stagger that where the shingles go. Now I'm going to be carving this. I'll do this one slow, but you can see there. Let's uh, turn the fan on. And I'll try my best to remember to go slow. Okay. So I'm going to remove some of that undercut line.
these are hard to carve with remove wood with because they're like chisels. But um, like I said, stops and starts, they work great. Okay, now let's cut our shingles in. Stagger them. Don't forget to stagger them. There you go. Undercut under here. Separate it from the piece. Wood carving is so much separation. It's like, look how we did that undercut there. We got shadows under each shingle now. See how fast I did that? Like, I'm not bragging. I'm not trying to show off saying I'm doing it fast. That's just kind of the way that I carve better, um, carving fast. Some people carve better when they do it slower. That's not how it works for me. I'm like basically a freak of nature. So let's do it here too. And see when I was doing that cut, I'm not doing it straight and I'm holding my the burr like down because then I can do the undercut and remove wood at the same time. Just like that. Okay, so I got most of the carving done. Well, I think I got all of it done. Um, I carved some doors in there. Oh, no, let's put some windows in the doors. Now I'm going to quickly sand it before I do any wood burning. This is a uh, sanding mandrel with, I think it's like 320 grit on there. Make sure you turn your dremels down when you do this or you'll fry your dremel. So there we are now. I just realized something. So when this is hanging on the wall, look how, uh, I don't know how I curved that door on so crooked, but that's okay. This kind of goes along with the piece. Now, um, more wood burning. I decided I'm not going to wood burn inside those rocks too much because I'm going to do the uh, poly shade thing and I'll sand the high points of the rocks to make them pop out. So now we need to do the, um, what would it be like the cedar? Um, siding okay so this is sounded pretty good here um, you can make it so it's like sloped you can make it so it's like okay so it's like I, I don't want to draw on this but you can do this with it you can make it round you can make it straight I think this one so it's pretty straight I think we'll just kind of go along with the door so we'll just start off here and kind of do a line So there, there could be a board there. My boards are never perfect. Nothing I ever do is perfect. Okay, right, so then we'll get a little one in here. And just like bricks again, you just offset them. So, those are pretty big boards, actually, but that's okay. Put one up here. One down here. And we'll go with one. Uh, where are we going to put this last board? Right here or down here? Let's put it up here. So, that's that. There's the boards in, and then you can put some little nail holes in there. This lets people know that they're boards. Good chance I'll probably do this on my um, bigger treehouse chainsaw carving for the house itself, but I'm going to have to... I kind of know what burr I am going to use to that will bur, burn it when I use a die grinder. So there you go. There's some boards. Now, this one, how do you want it? Because these are more round. 
how do you want to do this? How do we want to do this one? We can go this way. I like mixing them all up. I think let's go like this. It just gives you piece more movement and something for the eye to look at. And the last one, we'll do it a different shape. So this one goes like this. That one goes like this. This one, let's make um, let's make it go like this way. Oops. This wood burning pen is not getting as hot as it normally does. I think I need to take this uh, when they stop getting hot. You need to clean the tip and then you need to take this out of the screws and clean the connectors. Okay, so I'll get this done and uh, I'll be back. Studio on the lake, Ben. Ben, studio on the lake. I don't know if you watch my videos anymore. I know you don't make videos lately. I uh, just hope that you're doing okay, buddy. Got to clean that sock off. Actually, let's see here. There you go. There. Let the studio on the lake shine through. All right. So this is it. Look how crazy and full it looks. It's all crazy and wild. And yep, it's a lot of wood burning. Um, so what I'm going to do now is old school carving fusion thing. This is the only color of the poly shade that I got. So what I do is I lay this down, I put the poly shade on it like crazy, um, like just slap her on, um, flip her upside down, flip the piece upside down on the desk, let all the stuff drip out of it, wipe it with a rag. Then I sand it with the um, this with this, and it kind of acts like a smudger, and that's how you get the high points in the rocks to pop off. All right, all right. Got our old carving fusion uh, paint mixer hammer screwdriver here. Um, you want to mix up this poly shade because the color does sit on the bottom. If you haven't used it for a while. Um, yeah, this is this is messy, 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 messy part of it. But uh, it's something that I like to do when the piece is just too blah and I want to get some color mixture in there. You guys you guys could paint your houses and do whatever you want to do. Um, i got to get my Dr. Liz gloves on and um, stand by. Hi, Liz. If I haven't said hi. So here we go. This color is, uh, what's it, pine, pine, blonde pine or something? Honey pine. Blonde pine is the fr French word. So we'll just get her all on there. And yes, I'm a waster for people that want to hate because I waste stuff. I don't care. I don't have time to sit there with a little tiny brush and slowly paint it on and get in time inside every single little crack. I just get shit done. This isn't my favorite color, but it's all I got here. But... Um, for a long time, my favorite color was the, uh, what's that, the mahogany? But lately, I haven't liked my uh, carvings to be so dark. You want to make sure you get everywhere because it really sucks when you're done and putting every, put everything away and realize that you missed a piece, missed a spot. Like you even get here too, right? So how are you going to get down that deep crack? We'll just make a swimming pool in there. Yep. Okay, so I'll get this all done. Actually, we might as well just keep going live. Man, I, I don't, my videos are always so long. I say, okay, I'm going to make a 10 minute video. And then it just kind of, well, how can you show a carving like this in 10 minutes? That's why you have to break it off to like um, different. I've already signed the back. Okay, there's the J. There's the hole in the wall. Oh, once this polish shade uh, dries, like dry, dry, I will 
put the Jordy Johnson on it and date it. So we're pretty good there. Pretty golden. Pretty golden. What is it? Pretty golden po pony boy. Now I'll just let it sit like this on that rag for a bit. Let the stuff drip out. And um, yeah. Then we got to sand it. Dust, put your dust mask on. I will not be talking when I, because I have my dust mask on. And there you go. There's the Carving Fusion Fairy House Gnome Home. I got to give Just Carve Rob the side view because, well, I asked him if I should film carving this, and he said, of course I should. So there's your side view, Just Carve Rob. There's another side, two for the price of one. There's another side view. So it just goes to show you guys, Carve what you want. It's fantasy. You can do whatever you want. You can put roofs whatever you want. You can put the boards however you want to do. It's fantasy. It's just an open mind, a uh, fun imagination, and carve deeper. Think about layers and shadows and rocks and stones and little fairies with wings flying around, casting magic spells and all that crazy fantasy stuff. Carve Fusion, over and out. Sorry, I was in such a rush to leave. But um, even just like little things like that on the door, there's a little black doorknob. Sometimes I paint inside the windows black. That's give you a different effect too. Also, another thing I do is I'll lay this down and get five-minute epoxy and put some yellow paint, not epoxy, some acrylic paint, and um, put it in the windows. And it will act. Uh, the epoxy will burn the yellow paint and it will kind of go orangish. Like it's like a nighttime theme and the lights are on, but that's okay. I like this one natural the way it is. All right. Bye for the last time. Bye.